the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. What the worship team just brought, I don't want us to just leave this song like this. It's not a special number. It said, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he did what? When he prayed, you're going to pray for the person you're holding the hands now. I want us to release the power that is in this principle. And he said, the Lord gave Job twice. That's restoration. Open your mouth and begin to pray and prophesy. hallelujah one more prayer point the bible says that the prophet of god was having a meeting with the sons of the prophet elisha and then the bible records that the people told him they said master where we meet with you is too small let us go yonder to the other side and then while they were felling trees to be able to make a place the bible says an axe head that was borrowed fell and he said alas master and it was borrowed I'm in double trouble and then the prophet said where fell it and he showed him and he took a stick there is always a principle that connects prophecy with manifestation Lord that word and that principle I must engage to move to the other side reveal it to me lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray, lift your voice and pray. there is always something to do Make sure you're praying outside. Make sure you're praying online. There is always a mystery to engage in. Show me, oh God, the mystery to the next level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and then we're seated. Father, visit me tonight. I didn't come to waste my time. I know there is more to know. There is more to know. There is more to know. It's a sacrifice for my destiny. There is more to know. Lift your voice and pray. Shabros kalabaria takavanda. Jeketekete barata paria da balabo. Soprende kes kalabaria tekapo shaba. There's always more to know. Always more to know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everyone. Let me start first and foremost by sincerely appreciating our sacrifices um, God has given us. I 
believe is a supernatural grace. There are things that we do as a ministry that um, is not the norm for a normal ministry. When you do that, it will cost you a lot, such as the impromptu shifting of venues, you know, readjusting meetings and programs. Um, many ministries have paid for it, just shifting the date of a meeting, a convention, a conference. And I sincerely want to appreciate every one of us every time we get word, we get information that um, adjustments here and there are made to the meetings, either the days or the timings. We have been very faithful to cooperate. Um, and I sincerely want you to know that the Lord will bless you. For me, it's a sign of your love for God, your passion and your commitment towards your destiny, and also your sincere belief in the anointing and the grace that is upon my life and upon this ministry. And for that, I am deeply grateful. I would not take it for granted, especially for the thousands connecting online. Koinonia has become for many people um, the word of the Lord for them in season. I'm amazed at how many people from different nations and different places literally leave off the, the spiritual investment that they receive through this place. Thousands of ministries have been greatly built. Individuals have come into greater levels of the anointing. And um, I've also had the privilege of traveling quite extensively, especially in recent times. And uh, I am always very humbled to see the finger of God at work in territories we have had. I think it's been a very glorious year. Every year I keep saying this is the best, but um, sincerely speaking, I have seen the hand of God in ways, probably this year more than ever before, I have seen the manifestation of His Spirit and His anointing. God has done so many things. There is nothing more profitable for any man of God than seeing the fruit of your dealings and your trainings with God. Other people are living off the fruit of your work with God. It's so consoling and it's so blessing. Let me encourage someone up front. God is going somewhere with you. Be patient with him. Be patient with him. This is already a prophetic word for someone. Don't, don't rush God. The thing that is coming upon your life is big. Don't, don't rush God carelessly. Are we together now? A cow, I think a cow is pregnant for 13 months. Am I right? 13 months before it gives birth. There are other animals and other lower creatures that the entire gestation period, maybe from a week to a few months, depending on the size and the quality of what is being delivered. The long pregnancy communicates the quality of the prophecy you are about to deliver. Be patient with God. Are we together? Be patient with God. God is working out something that is transgenerational. God is working out something that for many of us will outlive the territories where he began with us from. This is how mighty men were raised. Sometimes it can be frustratingly long, but just wait with God. He said, ye who have continued with me, not ye who started with me, continued with me. Are we together now? One of the things that destroy people is when they begin to compete with themselves. Oh, we graduated together with so-so-so person. Now the person has three cars and I'm here just trying to press into God. Don't be foolish. Be discerning. You must understand that the program of God for people is very different. That person is a happy civil servant with his wife, but there is an anointing upon you that is for nations. The dealings cannot be the same. Are we together? There are times God will tell others, go and he will tell you, wait. Please, I'm, I'm speaking prophetically to someone tonight. It is important for you to see the magnitude of where he's taking you to. 
I look at my life today and I look at what God is doing and I thank him for granting me the grace to stay with him. I look at how many lives are being blessed and have been blessed. Do you know people will reward you for waiting? Yeah. Your waiting in itself is not a loss. You must stay and understand there is no man who attempting to build a house will not sit down and count the cost whether he has what it takes to complete it this rush rush life please hear me this life of wanting to do everything at once it will land us in trouble are we together there's a kind of fish that you have to cook it for a very long time what's the name the stock stock is this no, not stock. It's stockfish. Huh? No, no, no. There, there's, I can't remember the name. You have to cook it for a long time if you really want to enjoy it. You can off the fire if you are tired and eat whatever is there. But if you are ready for a healthy meal, it will stretch your patience. The hunger is burning you from head to toe, but you wait. But you wait in hope. You see, that's the difference. You can wait in vain. Both of them look the same. That's what is painful. It is the end that will show whether you were waiting in vain or waiting in hope. Because those who are waiting in vain and those who are waiting in hope, everything looks exactly so. It is the end that justifies it. So don't just wait foolishly. You wait in hope. Hallelujah. Let me, before we briefly touch on what the lord put in my heart to bless us with i just want to remind us again and again i will keep doing this as god grants grace as to why we are gathered here week in week out we've been doing this for many years and for those who have been part of the ministry long before koinonia in fact for many people it, it was every day every week laboring when when you look at people and they tell you they've been doing this for 10 years 15 years you're asking you mean this is how i mean nobody questions a student they look at you after 15 years and they say ah where are you now and they say oh finally i just got admission or oh, i'm writing work nobody says till now they say wow congratulations although the time is long but you are paying that price in hope one day they will ask you and you say oh sorry to tell you i got a job five years ago i'm now the director of the company and, ah, that little boy writing jesse listen god is going somewhere with you you can choose to end your dealing with him that's not going to hell you will not go to hell but you have pegged the extent to which god can do business with you I've told God there is no restraint as far as my work with you is concerned. I break every limit. Take me as far as you can take me. Stretch me as far as I can be stretched until I can carry an anointing that will bless a generation. Thank God for that which you have done, but this is child's play. In the visions of the Lord, I keep seeing it again that there is more. There is more. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, stretch me. Don't leave me like this. Don't leave me like this. I've seen signs and wonders, but this is not enough. I can't take what I have now to the nations. It will make me fight and quarrel. It will create competition. It's not unique enough. It's not distinguished enough. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Pray. you are praying lord i will pay any price
listen let me tell you something the key to being a real blessing is to be very anointed pay attention to what i'm saying the key to being a real blessing is to be very anointed jesus himself showed us this how god anointed jesus of nazareth verse 38 of acts chapter 10 with the holy ghost and with power listen then it says he on the strength of that quality of the anointing he went about doing good you cannot do good just out of compassion the problems that befall mankind takes more than sympathy there are challenges in the lives of people that need it. you have to move further than comfort you are truly a blessing when you pay the price for the anointing young and old listen to me i'm speaking to you every man of god i know today who is doing mighty things for god who is being thanked and honored by nations they are only thanking the anointing the price to have brought something forth is painful it's not a gift it's a school in the spirit and the semester system does not work like school here one course can take two days to finish another course can take four years to finish you don't have a system with god and say okay after a particular predefined space of time no you can be moving forward in the spirit and then just stay in a particular class and for two years you have not moved it's not backsliding it is the course content is bulky and you must be articulately trained now you can choose to think you are too you are too long and then graduate yourself the door is always open this lecturer does not close the door it is your passion that closes the door in this school of the spirit is students that close the door the holy spirit does not close it is wide open you can choose to walk out and say lord i'm tired please I'm, I'm grateful with all the mediocrity moving around and then you get angry and criticize others nothing will replace the absence of the presence and the anointing of the spirit i learn this every day as i have the privilege of studying history studying the moves of god and watching the things that god does through my life let me tell you the anointing is is a commodity of inestimable worth never trivialize it it is the secret of transgenerational relevance you are truly a blessing when you pay the price to sustain the ability to change lives to shift systems then you are a blessing sympathizing with people may help psychologically but it will not prefer solutions any man that trivializes the anointing is about to waste his time on earth i tell you the truth it has nothing to do with ministry i went for a meeting you know something happened i didn't even tell my people they watched that happen we came in this evening from a meeting i've been ministering in a conference and as i was stepping out by the roadside just to go to the vehicle probably they are here i may not know two families who came on friday for koinonia trusting god for a miracle of the fruit of the womb the husbands together with their wives and they were friends they decided to come and koinonia didn't hold on friday so they now paid the price went back to kaduna to catch up with the final session of the meeting this morning and when the meeting was done i think the protocol helped them i was walking and they came and um, they just looked at me and compassion filled my heart now whether or not i can solve their problem is another thing and it's wickedness to claim i can solve it when i cannot you see let me tell you something if you love god and you love people you will pay the price for the anointing that is the only way to bless people i'm speaking to someone here here's a family 
experiencing this kind of challenge they don't need counseling they've heard it they are not daft people I don't have to tell them just go and see doctors so, so, so and so I, I think they are adults enough they are married and they stood there and I watched the two women and watched their dear husband standing and I was standing in the middle of an opportunity that can begin a new journey for a family or brag like we always do as men of God lay hands on them and walk away and let them go back to disappointment and I looked at them years ago I would have been in I would have been in so much um, um, guilt because I knew I really wouldn't do anything about it but as the days have unfolded I have seen the spiritual synergy that this thing is a formula you can produce repeated results in the lives of people I caught the revelation of fruitfulness this year this year 2016 I caught it like a key and I said this is it I've gotten it there is a key when you search you will find when you wait for it to come and meet you you will never find it there's a lot of spiritual laziness we hope that God will carry the word and look for you no hospital moves around looking for patients the hospital is built even if you cannot walk they will carry you there there is a a unit called emergency but you have to get there I see people many times and I see that we're not really passionate enough I'm like a spiritual historian I'm searching what is the secret behind predictable results in this area there must be a hunger and I looked at them and I told the women hold my hands and they held my hands and I knew their wombs were open yeah not necessarily because they were under the anointing rolling I knew there is a level of flawlessness that you can step into as far as the dispensing of the anointing at that point you will know that you are a blessing you can see a man 20 years of misery and his prayer is to have an encounter with Christ through you and the moment they see you they start rejoicing because they know their problems have ended let me teach you something I'm still going to use money I hope you don't mind um, let me use money watch this I think I've taught it here the anointing is like money there are things the level of anointing you have can afford to produce there are results that you are anointed is not enough everything that needs to be purchased in the realm of the spirit that is below the level of your anointing can be purchased but every challenge higher than your level of anointing cannot be purchased watch this I did the teaching this morning similar to this and I want to use that analogy if I have for instance I'm not saying anointing is money but if I have a thousand naira worth of the anointing edge me and if you need maybe 200 naira worth of a miracle this miracle you need is within the jurisdiction of my anointing to produce it are you getting the point now so when you come to me I will be able to minister to you and give you an assurance that you are going back with a result are we together but if thank you if what you need is um, let's say a miracle the equivalence of a phone of 50,000 am I anointed yes but the challenge he has is beyond the anointing that I possess to solve that problem don't just say anointing is anointing you are joking how God anointed Jesus look at the extent that's why he could do good every problem Jesus confronted was lower than his level of the anointing so there was flawless results I'm telling you this is is a revelation God gave me the reason why some things happen and some don't happen is that those that happen are within the level of the anointing to be able to release it and those that are above it so I can lay hands on you falling down is under this but the miracle you need is above it so you will fall down and yet not have the miracle are you getting what I'm saying now you can come to me say man of God prophesy over my life I lay hands on you and you fall because the dynamics of being slain in the spirit 
is 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 the is a basic dimension of the anointing it does not mean you received anything so when you possess such a dimension of grace such that the major problems of mankind is within the jurisdiction of your grace to solve at that point you are a living blessing the woman with the issue of blood if she touched peter she would have kept bleeding correct yeah but she touched a man who was dripping anointing from head to toe when you saw jesus you knew that was it if you did not receive from jesus it was not a lapse of power it was your dishonor and lack of discernment do we have such people in zaria do we have such people in nigeria men that you can carry your trouble with joy with joy not with suspicion that the moment you land in koinonia before service starts you are dancing because you said the devil that did not stop me from coming here that's the end of it when people testify I am touched not just by the testimony but I'm humbled that by grace we have been able to stay with God and grow to a level where now the anointing we possess is above their challenges this is a very deep secret that many of you will catch as you grow in ministry it's working in me it's working in me it's God's ability God's ability is working in me it's working in me listen you know you possess an anointing when certain testimonies start repeating themselves when you begin to hear repeated testimonies then you know the same way a woman cooks and before you get to her restaurant psychologically you have tasted the food because you know she's not going to tell you sorry today this year i'm burnt she's left that level that's why they put a price tag on their food you buy rubbish for 200 naira anything you see smoky or not you manage it because you know what you paid for but when you pay 10,000 naira for a meal, listen, what will make men leave their nation and come to you? Are you that important? Because you think your name is Joshua Selman? Are you that important? That a man can, let me tell you something. Most people say people are busy. Nobody is busy. Everybody is looking for solution. If you become what they are running around looking for, I promise you, you can hold koinonia every day by 10 30 to 3 a.m in the morning notice the time 10 30 to 3 a.m men will still come and you'll be wondering are you not a government worker again and they will say the last person you prophesy to his salary for 30 years came to him in one year why should i want to labor like that you are not a blessing when you are not anointed i'm telling you this learn it understand this speak grammar speak hebrew words speak greek do anything you want to do if you cannot reveal christ he said great is the mystery of godliness christ is come in the flesh the word becoming flesh that men and women can carry their results a man comes here not loving god and hearing you speak something infects him he goes back and does not even know what is happening to him again look how long it takes people in the body of christ to adjust to spiritual things they get born again in january no passion in the atmosphere they got born again it's in november they now consider being filled with the holy spirit oh no there's no fire there there is a way you can step into an anointing huh the lifespan of your journey is one week in one week it will look like you've been born again for 10 years because of the impact of the grace you came under i made a vow to myself i said i will never go to a ministry twice to reveal christ there yeah, twice no no that you invite me and say come again it's like pushing a wall let's keep pushing I, I, I prepare my spirit that if god grants me an opportunity to come to your city or your area then you know something dramatic will happen can men come to you are you that valuable
I watch people trivialize the Holy Spirit. I watch people trivialize the anointing. And then somehow they think the key is just to receive lay none of hands. Oh man of God, I came with a seed of one million. Just lay hands on me. And then you go to another one, lay hands on me. And it's as if you are shopping for anointing. And then you bring it and say, now I have what it takes. You are joking. You are really joking. You believe spiritual things are that cheap? I came to challenge you. There is where God is taking you to. Don't, don't, don't rob yourself of the privilege of standing before nations to be a representation of the power and the grace and the glory of God. Look at the testimony of that dear lady. 4.69, you get 4.69. If it's cheap, try it. Go and prophesy to somebody after this night that you will come back with the same result. And then you see that it's not so easy. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When Benin came to Nigeria two weeks ago, look at the rush, look at the preparation. Literally, he kept the body of Christ at a standstill. Is it true that everything he shared, you have never had it? Will you be honest to say you have never had it? Is it true that what he taught you has never been heard? He has repeated it in many churches. He has taught series on it. So why seek him? Why crowd yourself outside in overflows? Why sit down and stream? Why cancel your programs? You didn't bring a man. You brought a grace. You brought an anointing. You brought a priceless ability that can turn the lives of people around now foolish people say what is there about them no no when you honor a man you don't honor a body you honor sacrifice you honor a depth of sacrifice that has afforded god space to move through that vessel in a mighty way listen listen look up let me tell you something come david dam let's assume david dam has let's assume that he has um high blood pressure or HIV watch this don't you think God wants to heal him on Wednesday don't you think God wants to heal him next year the desire of God to heal him is the day someone who has paid the price to give God space to release that dimension of his possibility when that vessel appears his healing has come why do people sit on a wheelchair till an anointed man comes is it that that's the day God wanted to heal them? That's the day the anointing that could solve that problem stepped in. Hmm. There are men that step into places and they just shift atmospheres. Just like that. But they never started that way. I shared a verse of scripture that I would want to share with us. The Lord, thank you David. The Lord gave me an instruction to repeat a few portions of what I shared in the meeting today with us and it will bless you Luke 1 80 please Luke chapter 1 verse 80 Luke chapter 1 verse 80 this was our first prayer point yesterday at the conference and I want to establish it again and then we will pray Luke chapter 1 media please help us I want us to pray tonight Luke chapter 1 verse Are you there? The first four words, please, if you are a Christian. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. Put your name where there is child. Yeah, ready? One, two, go. So men can grow. So men can grow. The problem is not where I am. I know I may not be so anointed now. I know I am barren of understanding but the Bible reveals to us that there is a possibility in the spirit where men can lead their current spiritual level to a pedestal that is higher and the child John the Baptist grew he was ordained a prophet from prophecy 
but he was born a child and the child grew when I found this scripture I jumped I said so men can grow once upon a time I was not here I grew meaning there are levels I should get to that I'm not yet there I can grow growth is a secret growth is a provision in the body that translates men into limitless possibilities I can grow and the child John grew to become a prophet and the child naive barren of any sensory perception into the realm of the spirit no prophetic acumen and the child grew men can grow I'm not hearing God now you can grow I'm not anointed now I can grow my company is nothing to write home about it can grow my marriage is nothing to write home about it can grow my home is full of children who are disturbing they will grow growth is a mystery that when you understand you know there is hope and the child grew and eni that little ministry that was meeting on the floor grew to what it is now and koinonia is growing 10 years from now when we stand before the nations and we look at the photos of today as excited as we are about today we will nod and say that's david dam and they say who that guy is shaking the nations and david dam grew ah look at mama look at femi promise these guys are just shaking nations in different territories and you will watch the pictures and see them sitting down and they grew and they will see some of you who are seated now as if you don't know anything about the anointing when they hear and say my god that is the woman of god whose crusades are packed full everywhere she's the one can you see her face in that picture and the woman grew men can grow into the anointing men can grow into limitless possibilities in the spirit the challenge is not where you are the challenge is do you want to grow there was a day this guy when he joined the worship team he could not play keyboard like this he challenged himself his music director and his leaders challenged him and he decided to grow now when i learned how to play keyboard I don't think this guy had laid his hand on a keyboard I began to play keyboard 1994 94 95 but I refused to grow so although is that long where I stopped in the growth is still where I am today you can be born again for donkey years but the peg you gave God is still where he will faithfully stand and wait for you you can be ministry and the highest miracle you will ever see is headache because that's where you stopped the moment you got to that level of your anointing you graduated yourself awarded yourself and held a convocation for yourself but there are those who even at phd they say we are still undergraduates lord we are staying with you when i hear men like benny Hinn saying i still want more of his anointing i say my god more of what after shaking nations yet some of us are already here bragging in our arrogance oh i prophesied to sister so 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 it came to pass you think that's what you are going to use to shift nations you are joking and the child i want to show you that men don't just happen and work strong in spirit but the system is this he was in the desert he was in the place of training for David, it was the cave of Adulam. Listen, please hear me. I taught in the conference where we went to on the coming revival. And I mean, I think some of you need to get our external ministration. Sometimes I wish that I carry all of you along. And uh, because those meetings are usually very glorious meetings, very epochal teachings. And I taught yesterday on what we call the travail, the mystery of seasons, the mystery of the dealing of God in a man's life. 
that brings the anointing the anointing does not come just because you want it the anointing is like a certificate that is given to you at the end of a season of being dealt with God and I want to share just a few parts of it and then we'll pray I want us to pray I'll just spend a few minutes and then we'll pray tonight fill me up till I overflow I want to run over I want to run over fill me up till I overflow Hallelujah. Please sit down. When a believer, listen to me, let me teach you. Let me show you how people grow and become matured in the spirit. Men do not become matured in the spirit just by going to church. There is a step there. But there is a system. Listen to me, please. God's system of working with men. There are seasons of your life. Watch this when you will pass through what we call the travail jesus said something very interesting john chapter 16 please give it to us quickly media john chapter 16 verse 21 jesus was teaching on the ministry of the holy spirit and he said something that is very interesting if you're a christian and it's projected and you can see it please i want you to read it one to read why stop this is strange i said it yesterday and i want to repeat it here some travails are because your time has come it's not because you are out of alignment with god's system jesus is teaching a woman comes to a point in her life where she's in travail the travail is not because she hated god the travail is because her time has come many immature believers will say ah the travel is a sign that she's missing out on god somewhere the bible says because her hour is come do you know there are things that happen to people's lives simply because seasons have come not because you are out of sync with god seasons have come follow me but as soon as she's delivered of the child the reason for her travel not a child the child the very object for which the sorrow came the bible says she remembered no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world but until then there is a contention please listen to me many pastors have tried to preach what i'm telling you away to tell believers nothing like that happens i i I love the body of Christ but brothers and sisters I tell you this by the authority of the grace of Christ given to me I know how men become anointed don't sit down and allow people just fool you into thinking one day an extreme dimension of the anointing will come you are really joking there is a system and the caption of that system is called the travail I will tell you why these seasons come they must come you never pray them away you only pray for grace to pass through them the praying and saying they should not come is saying i do not want to enter that realm i don't care who you are i don't care how you love god jesus went through a season where he said father if it be thy will if it's possible let's renegotiate how this thing will happen but he quickly remembered and said nevertheless not my will but your will be done Abraham waited 25 solid years 
embarrassingly painful his servants had children and he did not have any do you know what it means to respect a man who does not have results while you the subordinate has it that's what abraham went through he didn't just go through barrenness he went through the shame and the pain yet he waited it's in the system of god and is how he builds men and brings them into authentic power the generals of faith walked that way our generation is running away from it and we keep bragging and prophesying in arrogance we are going to do more than smith wiggles what you go and read their history and you will see a track record there is not one of them i know that escaped this not one not one of them there is a season of travail because your hour is come how many people want to start ministry without going through this and they crash land and make a fool out of themselves there is what qualifies you to host god there is what qualifies you to be a dispenser of the possibilities of god to nations one of it is this the mystery of the travail seasons that stretch your spiritual life from border to border seasons that stretch every part of your conviction mm. someone is getting blessed fill me up till i overflow i want to run i want to run one more time fill me up fill me up let me tell you the benefit of the dealings of God the first advantage of the dealings of God is that the dealings of God with a man produces alignment it produces yieldedness and it produces a track record in the spirit never forget this the dealings of god the spirit of man cannot align to god by default that destiny must come under a system that will compel alignment a system in ancient times they had a way they made the anointing oil right the olive oil they would take the olive plants and put them on something that looks like a threshing floor and put a heavy object upon it and someone will hold it and begin to turn it clockwise and the pressure mounted on that olive begins to squeeze out the oil the oil will drip out together with particles impurities but the man for the joy of the oil will not even mind the cry let me tell you God loves you too much to let your tears deceive him don't think he plans to end that season you must drink that cup in full i know what i'm saying does not look pleasant i show you the path to glory there is a relationship between death and glory there is a relationship between death and glory you will never be able to access glory without death verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies no you don't just speak to nations and doors open and in christ you are joking you are really joking that ignorance is a sign that there's something you have not even seen because scripture is prophetic you need the holy ghost holy men were moved by the spirit so only the holy spirit can interpret what he wrote there are three reasons why we go through seasons of travail let me give it to us quickly. Number one. Sabra kata bayakata. Ah. The seasons of travail in a man's life. Listen. They, they, are, they create experiences that give you a personal revelation of who God is. The first advantage of seasons of travail is a personal revelation of who God is personal revelation there's too much theoretical knowledge about God in the body of Christ 
so many people they know the god that this person said people come to sing special numbers are you clapping for my jesus is that what you give my god a foreign and a strange incense rising you must go through seasons the first advantage of the seasons of travail is they break out every sense of falsehood and theory and help you know who god is for yourself no longer the god of joshua selman you encounter him every name that god was named was an experience a season introduced that dimension of him what is the name you have given god based on your experience if you were asked to never call god by any name in the bible has your experience given him a name that you can relate with you call him the name of another man's experience show me a name like a jimmy can have a secret name for hope hope can have a secret name for a jimmy aaron can have a secret name for his wife i want you to show me a name that your experience with god has brought that only you can call someone else does not understand but two of you know i'll show you why many people do not have convictions in the body of christ they know the god of another person they do not know him for themselves god's ultimate desire is not only that men will introduce him to you but that they serve as ushers a time must come you must have a track record and say i know him i know whom i have believed i know hmm. job 42 from verse 5 to 8 Job was rich. He talked about God. He was a God-fearing man. He gave sacrifices. But a time came in the life of Job. He could not explain the predicaments in his life. Everything went haywire. His entire life crashed. And in the end, this is what Job said. Read it please. One to read. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now my eyes have seen you. I heard Joshua Selman when he was talking about you. I heard him say you can heal the sick I said amen but now that they told me I am SS I need to know the healer now now that they told me that I, I am barren I tried everything I went to every man of God they did their best Lord I locked the door me and you show me something about your glory church history is full of men who had encounters when they closed the door at everything and say lord show me something i'm tired of hearing the god of someone else and an explanation i cannot relate with show me the song that has come out of your experience with god worshipers you have been singing kotka's song you've been singing thai tribet song show me a song that came out of your tears you thought you will not make the next day and he gave you a song every time you are in a challenge that song comes it may not minister to others but it's your song it's not a song for congregation it's a song for your secret place a song that reminds you of who god is let me tell you you know why people certain people in the body of christ become unshakable and immovable it's not because they are blind it's not because they are not human they have an experience with God that is higher than every other thing. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now I have had an encounter with you. Job summoned God in chapter 38 and said, God, you need to come and reveal yourself to me. And when God showed up, God said, Job, I've been hearing you talk since chapter 1. I've just been keeping quiet. You've been making a lot of noise like you know me. Now let me talk to you. Where were you when I founded the earth? When I laid the foundations? When the morning stars sang? And Job said, my God, I was never taught that there is such a thing. He said, declare if you have understanding. There are healing evangelists who stepped into the level of creative miracles when they sat down and prayed Kenneth E. Hagin he was the guinea pig to his healing ministry dying of a deformity and nobody could heal him I told you about my story I've had fungal infection that ate my head they said hair will not grow on my head again I know what oppression looks like when I'm laying hands on people that memory sponsors the release of the anointing 
there is something that sponsors compassion it's not just because I'm kind hearted no when you stand and you see someone's legs eaten by worms and is smelling you are attempting to go but you remember an experience ha! fill me up till I overflow I want to run I want to run fill me up related to students have you seen have you seen a final year student advising a new student who is just entering he will tell you sorry sir they gave me a course i'm trying to do change of department and the boy cannot sleep and the final year student is laughing because to that guy is a mount he, he's having a mountain can they change my course uh, can they do this sorry sir how do they do it in abu and you laugh i say my brother there's more to come you better relax you have not seen the guy in the department you are going to and then she enters the office of the man and for the first time in her life a man would blast and insult her he said you are stupid if you think you're a prostitute i'm not for you go out <sighs> and she leaves never has she been insulted like that then you find out others who live in that realm every day they insulted them till they submitted their project it's called growth and the child grew no matter how you sympathize with that boy leave him sometimes don't pity people too much to cover seasons that will afford them opportunity to grow there, there is sometimes you can go through so much pain you want to over pamper people and in doing it you don't give them the opportunity to know god leave them alone every day you are giving him two two hundred naira one day tell him look i've done my best for you go and find out and he would think we'll call him later you say abba i know sam sam will call me he can't allow me to die like this i saw him cooking yam and then you, the holy spirit will tell you don't call him by nine o'clock he will start browsing the secret of prosperity enter now something is happening to him don't stop it pressure leads people to the anointing When a man starts a ministry, he will criticize every man of God. What is there with crowd? Wait and see. It's just because we need a venue. When he has a venue and for two years, he will first deny. Then later he will look at it and say, well, there may be something. After three years, he will be the first to sit down in the pastor's conference. When they say, I prophesy open door, he will be on his knees before the prophecy comes. Pressure brought him to an encounter. There are people who are too stubborn. Pharaoh was like that. Pharaoh did not have an experience with God. He only knew the God of the Hebrews. One day God said, I will reveal to you who I am. Moses, let me use you as a tool. Go and show this man. And he said, ah, is he just parting the Red Sea? They left him face to face. When he killed his child, he said, I did it. Me, God, let your witches bring him back to life. And all the gods of Egypt could not do it. And he said, the God of Moses, he is listen brothers and sisters let me tell you something you need an experience with god that will give you the audacity to move through life we chicken out too much and we look at life strange as if it's because you have not gone through i want you wherever you threw your experiences go and gather them this night create a basket in the spirit call it my testimony and call it my ladder to the place of the anointing store it back i know a and b happened to you that was not favorable but the bible says for we know those who have not gone through it do not know but us we know that all things all things all things all things there are things i've gone through in my life that make me look at mountains like mold hills i tell you I don't even pray about them what for it's a waste of time i already have worked with god enough to know that there is a way out i don't have to disturb him some prayers are a symbol of faith and faithlessness and ignorance it's because you do not understand the systems of god 
a track record that track record produces strength and stamina proverbs 24 verse 10 if you fall in the day of battle it says your strength is small i see a lot of believers who do not have stamina you you see how malleable they are everything bends them under pressure to explain everything to everybody no it's not like that it's not like i'm a bad person who cares there is a system you go with god that you are governed by posterity conscience and the fear of god any other person can go places I look at the body of Christ and there's too much pressure to defend our ego. Let, let them not say it's me that carried this thing. You know. See, everybody watch. Uh -uh. Let them think what they want to think. You have gone through a lot with God to know that honor is a mantle. It's not just what you fight for. If it's not on your life, no matter how innocent you are, you will not be honorable. Do you have that track record? Please, I'm telling you this so that when you go back home, you will kneel down and thank God for what made you cry yesterday. Something that brought tears out of your eyes has now opened you up to enough room to know God. Listen, listen. I wish what I were saying were a lie. I would have just told you sorry. But what I'm saying is so true. It's the foundation for authentic power. Are we together? every time they talk of blessing you you think of your uncle you think you have faith you really don't have faith then one day your uncle leaves you and says from today uh you are a man how old did you say you are you say yes, i'm 23 I'm, I'm still a child he says no you're a man from today you fend for yourself for one month you will see that there's no result meaning somebody's result was covering you corporate success can be dangerous because you can hide under it thinking you are making it worship team is doing well are you doing well you many people hide under corporate success we are anointed i know we are men of god i know life will separate you and demand from you you have to prove that you are intrinsically valuable and the key is to pass through these seasons before i continue i want you to pray one minute from your heart and say lord the let the seasons come i only ask for grace i'm no longer afraid i've been running away from it and fast forwarding my breakthrough but lord i summon courage uh -uh. if it is hunger let me go through it till i catch the key for wealth i'm tired of begging up and down lord let these seasons bring me to the anointing. I know. I know. Oh. The Bible says after two days he will revive us. And on the third day he will raise us up. Are you praying, Koinonia? Shabbat Lord, let them come. They may be painful. But I open up my spirit. And I receive the voice of God through those experiences. They may be embarrassing. But Lord, I need an encounter. I need to know you for myself. Are you praying? I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. But now I know that challenges do not kill. I had men say it, but I know now. Hallelujah. Listen, this is what makes your sermons powerful because you are speaking from a depth of conviction. When you preach from pain, you don't preach and you are looking whether you are right or wrong. Ah, I hope this thing I'm saying that's theory you went to do browsing copy and paste but when you are preaching your life and your pain blood is dripping from your life that testifies that you know what you are saying you are not advising people you are telling them the way out whether they believe or not is their cup of tea men of conviction are men who have pain they have scars that are, let me tell you a scarless man 
is an anoint is, is, is a man who is barren of the anointing your scar is where the anointing is rubbed on it's not rubbed where there is no scar the place of scar is the point of application the balm in Gilead is not applied to a place where there is no wound that anointing when arm robbers hit someone and the Samaritan man came he rubbed oil on the places of the wounds everywhere that he did not have wound there was no need for anointing don't rub your pain there is glory coming out there don't rub your financial struggles there is an unction coming up there don't rub your barrenness let me tell you let all the naysayers preach you will find them after koinonia they will still tell you i'm talking nonsense to you you will still hear them but you continue you are going through it for them the day they will need your miracle by then you will be anointed enough to help them listen there were people who said things about me many years they never saw my face they do not even know me many years later they would come to meet me hearing about joshua selman they never knew never knew and now they saw me and compassionately like joseph ministering to his brother i would minister to them while i was going through what would give me the anointing to help them the devil was using them to criticize and talk but god said keep moving just set your face like a flint sometimes silence is the way to speak silence is the only way to speak in certain seasons i'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart tonight you catch the key i'm sharing with you you catch an unction that will change your life you are two people conscious it has stopped you from entering your what will they say there is a way you go through something i say let them say the trouser is torn no problem you, you have gone to, this this trying to live your life for people you just tell yourself it's over i'm done with it i i i know my redeemer lives if it does not bless me let me die but doing it just for my reputation is over i'm tired of trying to just be nice for people and experience so you want to worship god and you're watching that guy i like is looking at me maybe my clothes will roll maybe they will see my inner wears there is a way you go through fire and not believe you will come out before they raise the song you will lie down as if you are sleeping and start rolling on the ground roll like a mad person and people will say ah, ah david why are you rolling this way and he said i'm rolling to the god i'm dancing to the god who took the kingdom i never knew i would be a king god took me now you just inherited joy i'll be your son's daughter you don't know what happened between me and your father god took an anointing from your father and brought it to me fill me up till i overflow i want to run i want to run over fill me up everyone here you need a personal experience with God listen I speak especially for the men you cannot live a lifetime of conviction without encounters you will bend to your convictions left right and center because the devil will throw everything at you you must have a story in your life that you can tell your children and say in 1971 I thought I would be eaten by this disease but I'm standing strong Satan where were you in 1971 if I didn't die then I would not die now we have boastful confessions in the body of Christ without an experience that sponsors our conviction oh if my ministry does not grow in one year let it be that i'm not called of god and you are there ranting and speaking nonsense the key is not english the key is not rema the key is a track record when blood drips from you then the oil comes through it the anointing is for the place of pain i'm speaking to someone here the 
anointing is for the place of pain. No scars, no anointing. No scars, no grace. No scars, no testimony. No scars, no unction. That's how it works. You can preach another message to yourself. But I tell you, if it is power you look for, I show you the way it comes. A track record. The cave of Adulam. Seasons of pain. Seasons of travail. As soon as Zion travails, as soon as she begins, the contractions that come to a woman is not a sign that she's a stupid woman. It will make her uncomfortable. She will get up and be walking around. When she goes to the hospital, they will make her do exercise. She will do stupid things. Her husband will be there. She will act as if she's out of her sense. A baby is coming. When that baby comes, so come visitors everywhere for the sake of the baby. You are gathered here today because somebody did not allow this training to pass. You are gathered here today because there is blood dripping from someone's altar. We, who will gather in your own meeting because of the price you are paying? You think it will happen? Something for nothing is witchcraft. You are joking. There is a track record. With all the greed in you, with all the pride and the self-centeredness, you want the anointing? No, sir. You will pass through that furnace. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. While you are crying, God will only supply grace. He will not take you out. But if you can walk and finally step out at the other end, you will be a vessel unto honor. It is at that point you will think a thing and God will do it. You have not prayed. You are thinking, God, I think I need, I need 50,000. Someone says, God said I should give you. It's a realm. You don't claim it. You qualify for it. There are things I've, I'm seeing in my life now. I wanted them many years, but I did not know that the track record had not created room for them. God kept telling me, forget about these things. Just keep walking with me. Today, I wonder. I didn't even know when they came. The track record. Oh Lord, make me a kingdom financier. And then God tells you to sew all your clothes and everything. And then people pity you. You feel like an idiot. You work so hard. And God tells you to give it away. And God said, you say, but God, why are you not doing it for someone else? I thought you said you wanted the wealth mantle. You think it's just about wearing designers? You are joking. There is a furnace of affliction. You make others rich and remain poor. A season comes, God will say, the season is full. Your cup is full and your heavens are open. And men say, where is this coming from? It's a mystery. See, these are the men you talk about them you bring curses on yourself believe me when i tell you this thing there are men you speak about them literally god will, they don't curse you their covenant the blood that has come out from their life is still on an altar it, it has a throne in heaven this is what produces miracles these things you are seeing this is not by faith it's a covenant god vows to back you as far as this is concerned so you can go to the nations you don't need to ask them whether they believe God in the church you just need to go you carry your altar you carry your covenant and then you bless the world do you have an encounter with God do you know him not Jesus of Nazareth do you know him do you know him I cried for a revelation of him not just a vision of Jesus an experience so when I say God is a good God something in me should be able to explain it when I say God is a deliverer I should be able to say how many are they that rise up against me many are they which say where is his help I should be able to say but thou O Lord art a shield for me you're my glory my glory 
not just koinonia's glory my glory i know you can lift my head i went through hell men said bury him but you brought me out that was david for you david was a man who knew god you see why he knew god he went through more pains than any king he went through more disappointment to an extent that God said you will not build me a temple he would have been offended he said God I know you too much I know you too much to complain I will gather the money for my son speaking to you too many believers who don't know God we brag around thinking because we have little anointings here and there brother you need a track record that blood you are running away from must come out no it must come out if it came out of the son of god it must come out of his body the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows i show you a virgin path that many people may never follow they don't like it they like the anointing they like the charismatism they like the influence but they do not like the track record A man can get to a level where if he prophesies to you and it's a mistake God will make that mistake come to pass because there is a covenant he has tied his integrity to so they can just look at you and say be blessed you have entered the creative dimension of your work with God where you don't just reveal things you create them it's a realm I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart not many men of God will teach you this thing I'm telling you because many people consider it to be the hallmark of their ministry it's like a man coming to tell you bedroom secrets between you and the wife no sensible married man will just carry anybody outside and come and tell you bedroom secrets what I'm telling you now is the mystery responsible for any great man most men of God I understand why they create a system and never share it I don't think it's pride they value the blood that drips from them it takes love for you to hear what I'm teaching you and you must love God to appreciate it just like there are some of you looking and say wow this is very interesting look if I were you I would stop rushing my life I really will stay with God see if you seek him you will find him we are not seeking him we are seeking things around him when fasting is still a problem you are seeking him you are joking God will say separate yourself two days I want to talk with you ah oh God I beg please you are there I bind that spirit and I'm not talking of some hilarious things after tonight's meeting you say I'm going 60 days all that is religion because it's not directed you will only starve yourself for nothing. Listen now. Number two. This will be probably one of the greatest messages you would have heard in this 2016. If you walk with what I'm teaching you, you will command results in a way that will scare you believe me remember i gave us a scripture that is a verse of comfort and the child grieved. so you don't have to sit down and think some people were born like that nobody was born like that and jesus grew john grew so you can grow benny him grew kenneth copeland grew you must grow you will not just become you will grow number two the second advantage of seasons of travail in our lives the second advantage is that it impacts upon your life understanding understanding a comprehension of the secrets of God listen there are secrets in God that only when you are the lowest point of your life you will see them. There are things God has shared with me today. I will no, I, well let me not say no mortal man. There is nobody that may ever get to hear it. You will not even believe it. There are secrets that until you get to a level with God, 
if it does not show even you yourself will not believe it listen we take truth from faith to faith there are mysteries that surround this kingdom that control results and power when you are there with God it affords him the opportunity to show you certain deep things that when you were high there you would not have believed but now that you are there you will hear understanding the comprehension of the secrets of God the Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord right the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him and he will reveal his covenant look at me <laughs> read this Bible from Genesis to Revelation I promise you I promise you there are things you will never see pain is a key in the spirit there are doors that only pain can open believe me brothers and sisters believe me on this there are times you go through seasons in your life when you go through those seasons in your life then certain scriptures open up the Lord is my shield and my salvation who shall I be afraid of the Lord is the strength of my life of whom and it now makes sense ah I now see better is one day in your house than a thousand elsewhere I rather be a doorkeeper all of a sudden it will be as if you have written books but now you are seeing things there are things I've seen this year that I literally had to stop and I started crying I said my God there are things I said by the spirit in koinonia teachings that not even me had come into the fullness of the comprehension of it I have looked at them ah, Psalm 54 verse 7 for he had delivered me out of all trouble and my eye had seen his desire on my enemies do you have an experience that can explain that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side none shall harm you only will you stand and see have you seen that That's why the name of Jesus doesn't make any, any impact for many people. We shout Jesus like a champ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. It's not in English. That name reacts to something. See, let me tell you. There are men that are deeply respected in the realm of the spirit satan knows what makes him respect men it's not english when you see a man walking in this realm of the spirit full of scars blood dripping down as a symbol of his sacrifice to communicate his desire to let the multifaceted dimensions of god be hosted in him they are the kinds that he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm they are the kinds that are unkillable. They will match a charm and pass. Even the charm knows it will not work. It's not try. Maybe I, I'm, I'm trying to make the charm work. No, no. It's a realm. That is the realm where they can look and say, no sickness can touch me. You know, we mock ourselves in the body of Christ. Oh, I, I mean, I, I can't be sick. And we're just joking. Do you know at what level in the spirit that word becomes activated in your life? every prophecy have has levels just like in our environment there there are certain conditions for certain things to happen don't just speak because you saw it in the bible are we together and so there are so many men of god today they carry their hands lay it on sick people and say i'm anointed and after five years they carry the diseases on the people not by airborne disease the mystery of transference 
because they do not know that you must truly sustain a higher potential the bible says lay hands suddenly on no man lest thou be a partaker just by laying hands you can partake listen in your walk with God there are secrets God will show you they are not for public consumption they are not doctrines they are secrets he reveals to you to guide the delivery of the grace he has put upon you it will mislead people when these secrets become public not necessarily because they are demonic but it is a unique dealing of God to you William Branham had a secret with God where his angel will appear when he saw that angel in a healing meeting it was a sign to him that the prophetic mantle was activated then he will begin to heal and prophesy now if you sit down and walk like that you will get into witchcraft something else will appear to you are we together now because that was a unique dealing a portion for Kenneth E. Hagin it is in the secret place as you walk with God you begin to learn certain anointings he will train you with certain sensations just for you to know what kind of anointing is in the building now you can't write a book on it you will bring people into error he will show you when the healing anointing is there he will use your body parts as keys to symbolize to you you will your your organs of interaction with the spirit will be heightened they have personalized dealings with the spirit so when you come for a meeting you stand near someone you can know that there is witchcraft at work not just because you saw a spirit a code was given to you in the secret place and God says whenever you have this sensation is the presence of a demon spirit for someone else that sensation can mean breakthrough is coming it's like jam questions you see how they mix them your question one is someone's question ten that's how it is in the spirit he may you may feel heat in your hand and say it's healing anointing no it is your secret place that gives you your own question paper and God tells you for you this experience means breakthrough is coming oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. to people sometimes you see me laying hands on people and sometimes I can just stand there are there are things your body becomes a superconductor of his glory you can feel the impulses of God's desire he can move in any way he wants with you but we never remain in the secret place until we get that depth of understanding I don't just mean understanding of quoting scriptures the secret meaning to truths in scripture you can stay with God and the moment you see someone coming you know that this man will destroy me is you didn't have a vision there is a dealing with God there is an impulse you know that this car is going to have accident I will come out it's not just out of fear hi why have I been feeling like a cow no 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 no, no. I'm not talking about that I'm talking about a sensation you get up and you can know my elder sister is in trouble you were trained in the secret place i show you mysteries now, physically you just see men doing things but i wish your eyes would be open in the spirit they are like robots wires from eternity connected to different parts of them that communicate several impulses of the spirit that's how sometimes i can know the exact point where the holy ghost will touch someone I can stop my preaching and as I'm opening my mouth the anointing is touching the person it's a training it's not guessing you try doing it it's not guessing that level of precision comes in the secret when he visits you he tells you this is a key to this
one of the things you will get still on point two is he will now reveal to you the unique role you have to play in his end time agenda no 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 you have to get to that point where god now tells you look david Dam, come i have passed you through seasons and then he tells you david Dam, this was what all, it was all about you're going to take the worship the healing power of god through worship to the nations that is your mandate downloaded it's not just the issue of talent alone it's the issue of the seasons in your life bringing you to a place where he now gives you the blueprint and he says david Dan, you will be a mistral you will speak my purposes to nations and while he's downloading it you are dear tiny you but an experience has qualified you for a mantle something comes on your life you may not even realize when it came all of a sudden you will find out that you go for a meeting and all of a sudden you are worshiping and the prophetic starts manifesting dramatic results and healings all of a sudden someone calls you and says sorry we're in uk we just listened to your album we are ready to pay for everything you have been fasting for open door you even try to join a site that will help to facilitate your travel the door was not open in the spirit now it has been opened the nations will call you i want to show you how men rise in the spirit when you rush physically whereas the door is closed in the spirit you will frustrate yourself and go around and come back to the same point your unique role as you are seated here looking at me can you stand up right now and say apostle I know what my role is in God's end time agenda. I'm an intercessor. My experiences with God has revealed this to me. That he has called me to through the ministry of intercession birth the purposes of God in the lives of men and nations. Have you found it? I was in Kano preaching at a PFN um, conference a few months ago. Hey, Jimmy, I met a woman for the first time in my life who finishes her Bible every month. She said sometimes in 11 days she finishes. By word of knowledge, I called her out. Even me, I don't finish my Bible like that. Read your Bible and finish in a month. You know how hard it is to read these things. That's to tell you it's not an ordinary book. You have finished books more for luminous than this. But what is it about this that you cannot just finish? It's not a story book. When the Spirit of God comes upon it, there is a lot here. There is a reaction to your spirit that will force you to not rush it. There is a level of building you must have with God to be able to read your Bible and finish it. This woman finishes her Bible every month without fail. It's something I've not done. I don't know if there's any man, I, I may be wrong, but I don't know who finishes your Bible every month, cover to cover, then start again. But here is a quiet woman it's a track record with God you will be surprised something happened to her life maybe her child died maybe she lost her job and she said Lord since nothing is working in my life let me pick my Bible all of a sudden she stumbled across the mantle of her destiny and now this woman is an intercessor when I saw her I was almost saying Ma, I can pay your house rent if need be to just include me to be part of your prayer point i have met a few women a few women maybe i think there, there should be one here one mama they believe that part of their life's assignment is to pray for me constantly man that is the greatest gift you can give me you can buy me a car you can buy me a house those things are mundane but to have men and women when i'm when i'm i'm just moving around traveling by air whatever i'm sleeping somebody's awake constantly touching heavens for me it's a mystery but there are men like that there are others who are financial apostles they are the ones who will fund god's end time agenda there are ladies here your prophetic destiny is tied to your marriage that's why god is so strict with you other women can marry anybody but for you you are like esther so because of that there are certain things that must happen in your life 
God will not allow certain things to happen. You will be saying, God, but why me? He says, because Esther must marry Ahasuerus for Israel to be free. And so it will not just be anyhow. Oh, oh, oh. about your life can be connected to prophecy but these seasons will reveal them to you every man that tries to ask you out he just leaves it may not all be demonic it's because you have been separated there is a mantle on you you have been separated you may not know but i say it again esther must marry a hazardous so that israel will be free it's not about marriage and children the bible does not discuss the children of ahasuerus and esther it's not necessary haman is a beast that wants to destroy the the israel of god and it will take an esther so god will separate you other people may be moving god will say for you stay here oh god where are you going with me the secret place will reveal it So that you stop judging everything as delay oh god i'm going through delay in my life all my colleagues are married do you not see what is upon you do you not see that there is a mantle and that's what controls the things that happen around your life while you are seated i want you to pray in one minute and say lord what is my role in your end time agenda make it clear please pray Please pray, Shabbatakata. Lande Kretos Kalaba. Why do you visit me in the night with songs of worship? Where are you going with this melody so called? Is it just to watch an album or is there more? Where am I going with these songs of worship? What is the meaning of all these visions? You wake me up in the night. I can't sleep sound. You are showing me things. To what end, oh God? Where are you driving my destiny to? Why am I so passionate about finances? Is it just to prosper? Or is there more? Is there a mantle upon my life that must release a resource for God's end time agenda? I thought it was all about business. I thought it was all about wealth. But could there be that there is a prophetic anointing upon it? Show me my role. Why have you given me influence? Why do I meet great men everywhere I go to? Why do men of influence want to talk to me? Is there an anointing upon my life? Is there mantle that will be used in this end time why have you given me unusual influence why have you given me access why am i so compassionate could there be a prophetic explanation The third advantage, we're rounding up. When all is said and done, you get to the place of the anointing. That was what it was all about. Listen to me. The pain is a journey. The pain is not an end. The pain is a door leading you somewhere. Finally, you get to that place where all is prepared your body has been prepared now to carry grace 
your marriage has been prepared to fulfill God's agenda you get to a point where God tells you all the relocation was all about the anointing all the activity was all about the anointing you've been a graduate for 15 years no job it was all about the anointing all about the anointing I seek an agenda that is bigger than your needs thank you for aligning yourself it was painful but now that you have gotten here then you will encounter grace the ancient mystery that came upon ordinary men and turned them into signs and wonders that is not just an ordinary impartation of falling down and standing up your spirit is now programmed to begin to host possibilities possibilities that is the realm where your voice becomes like the voice of God you speak and it rattles the foundations of men's destiny it's not about oratory there is an authorization that comes upon your life on the strength of this sacrifice listen to me there are two dimensions of receiving impartation the first is a direct impartation from God because there are certain anointings that are new and your secret place will be the first to introduce that possibility of God so there is no physical vessel carrying it to release it to the earth you will be the first to enter a covenant with God that will reveal that possibility listen please look at me not every mantle that should be on earth is already on earth not every mantle that should be on earth was recorded here in the Bible there are mantles that are still yet to come there are graces that are still yet to come the gift of the spirit is not nine only nine were revealed there are many more there are many more expressions of the spirit seeking for men let me tell you it is important you understand this there are many other possibilities of God the anointing is like rain it moves from Asia to Africa seeking for vessels that are worthy enough for its landing and it doesn't find any and it goes to the continent may Africa keep it because there are certain graces there are things God has been wanting to do on earth but the anointing moves like a plane not finding a place to land the same way demon spirits go around restless that's how the, the certain dimensions of God's mantle are restless they are looking for bodies bodies a body has thou prepared for me when you go through this season then it comes oh for when it comes upon you then you will begin to manifest things that you will never believe possibilities you will change things that's when you can look at someone's jump score and say what did you get he says 141 and you say i change it he goes to check and sees 276 no 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 at that level they are not clapping for a man of god you have represented a system that brings the possibilities of god to people i'm showing you how to be a blessing it's not just by giving people sewing machine you must carry an anointing God keeps telling me every time son if you will give me more room there is still so much I can do with you you know sometimes when he says these things I just start weeping because I just sit down and say my God so there is more there is more there are challenges that some of you may have that we have not yet accessed the level of grace to reveal Christ to you in that dimension we can choose to camp around this mediocrity or still press and say there is more there is more when people act as if they have arrived i am shocked so a direct encounter in exodus chapter 4 moses had a direct encounter his mantle came directly from god no one had done what he was about to do and so god had to give him the impartation directly but the second dimension is impartation through the ministry of men we are not strange to this understanding. I've taught it here and there. 
and I've taught you that men are systems in the realm of the spirit. They are not just human beings. They represent systems. Let me reiterate what I said in one of the meetings. Watch this. I told you that spiritual growth is through relationship. Hear me. But kingdom advancement is through covenant. If you did not understand it that time, maybe you have grown enough to get it now. Let me repeat it. I said that our walk with God, spiritual growth is based on relationship. But the advancement of the kingdom, God's end time agenda is based on covenant. And the second law is that God reveals himself dimensionally. He reveals portions of himself and commits portions of himself to people. But the system with which he brings that about is that when God intends to reveal himself in a way, he must find a man. When he finds a man, listen, he enters a personal covenant, not Old Testament, not New Testament, a personal covenant with that man. And that covenant with that man becomes his authorization for revealing that dimension of him to that dispensation. Nobody in that dispensation will encounter that dimension of Christ, ignoring what that individual represents. You must pass through him or a tribe that is connected to him for you to enter that dimension. So when you look at the healing ministry on earth today, for instance, you trace it down to different men of God, it finally lands on Benihi. He is the living system that represents God's healing power to the nations today. And until Benihi goes to be with the Lord, no matter how anointed you are, you will still make reference to his covenant with God that represents that territorial dimension of healing. Are you getting the point now? The word of faith, you go down to people like David Ibiome, you know, Bishop Oyedeko, and it lands finally on Kenneth Copeland. He is the living system that represents the communication of God's ministry of faith on earth. But there are much more. There are other possibilities God wants to reveal. He has not yet found a man who can align to reveal that possibility because the heavy persecution that will come on that man for being the first to introduce that dimension listen let me tell you no it's not something i say in the open. when you understand this mystery then you will know the reason why you must be prepared to carry the anointing the anointing will bring certain grave grave levels of hostility in your life that if you are not built by God you will die men who introduced all of the movements we know in the body of Christ some of them it was until they died many years after they had died other people who were the fruits of their mantle stumbled across their books and they said my God 50 years ago this man wrote this now he is dead do you know there are many things Kenneth E. Hagin wrote and many of the generals is now the church is understanding them. We read them and even edited them. But now we are seeing that ah, this is it. Many years ago, John G. Lake said, you know, the casting out of devils also produces manifestations. They insulted him and they said manifestations are only impartations. John Lake knew what he was seeing. He was describing a dimension of the deliverance ministry that was not yet known but right now it is like the last 10 years that that ministry just started coming to africa but they were men with the eyes of the eagle they had seen it do you know there are many things some of you here you go back to your notebooks and read messages you listened to in 2001 that's when you will scream and say do you mean i was under this anointing and i did not recognize it See, if you want to move more than having an anointing to becoming a spiritual system it's not a very attractive life your entire life is a lonely one the the course of life that everyone follows you may never have the privilege to enjoy it there are certain men on earth today who carry an anointing called a kingmaker anointing 
I never knew there was such an anointing until God taught me. Let me tell you the price for carrying a kingmaker anointing. You will never enjoy what the anointing carries through you, but you will make others have it. There are men like that. Their churches will never be large, yet they will produce the largest churches on earth. Their crusades may never have signs and wonders, but they will transfer the deepest miracle working anointing. It's a kind of anointing. If you don't know it, you will say they don't have the results you are looking for. Be careful. There are dimensions. It's a kind of grace. Paul said, so then death works in us. Paul was never married in his lifetime, but he taught married people how to live. That's the kingmaker anointing. It brings you into a realm that the person himself does not have the privilege to ever enjoy it. Like the woman who spoke to me, a woman who probably had never held 100,000 of her money, but she said, my son forever walk upon gold. That's a kingmaker anointing. It will be many years in my life walking with God, I will now realize that so this is what was released. That mama never knew she carried it. Only God knows where she is on earth now. Maybe she's seated as we are talking right now. She's trusting God to raise 200 naira for her. But she has produced a wonder through the anointing in her life. There are men you ignore. They carry things they are not authorized to benefit from it. But they will give it to you. <laughs> ah, There are mysteries in this kingdom. There are mysteries in this kingdom. So a woman who never had a good home, never had a good home, but there is a mantle upon her. When she blesses your marriage, that pain is what authorizes that anointing to work in her life. So you can see all her children haywire. Seven children, they are all touts. And you say this woman must be irresponsible, but she may be the greatest prayer warrior you ever know. There is a woman who lost her husband her marriage failed when she was 20 called Anna the prophetess for 64 years she was in the temple interceding you would think what kind of prophetess are you that you could not solve your problem that was a kingmaker anointing when Jesus was born he said my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel now Lord let me go to rest all I was waiting for I may not experience his ministry in my lifetime but my job was to bring him here. We are going to pray. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to move to the next level spiritually. The anointing is what we need to bring the love of Jesus to nations. How God anointed Jesus. Jesus said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Doctors, you need the anointing of the spirit. If you treat patients with what you were taught alone, you will watch many patients die in your hands. You need more than injection and, and, and stethoscope. You need a grace. Businessmen, if all you think you want to do is real estate and make money and do all of this, you are going to be in trouble because there are forces. You need the anointing. You need the anointing to marry. You need love to marry foolishly and anyhow. But you need the anointing for your marriage to strike a chord. For Esther to marry a Hazarus so that Israel will be saved. Esther needed an anointing, not just beauty. There was a kind of ointment she rubbed on herself for one year before she became married. You will need more than reading if your education is to bring the glory of God. You can read to get 4.69. But you need more than that. God will ask you to vow a vow. And say for as long as I live. I will use my certificate to bless you. And you say yes. You will answer two questions and still get an A. Because it was never about your effort. You have a deal with God. So the covenant from that sacrifice has kicked into a man will vow to fail you and his life will go haywire in one week not because you are so prayerful he is the keeper of his covenant this was part of what I preached in the conference 
and the Lord said I should bring it home and speak to us again brothers and sisters the time you carry the anointing that can solve men's problems truly you have earned the right to be a blessing stop sympathizing with people you have done it too much press 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 like the woman with the issue of blood let them say whatever they want to say but can you press through the crowd and carry something authentic so you thank God for not allowing you start ministry yet you would have just been like any other man little signs and wonders 12 members today 20 tomorrow 5 next tomorrow then you now join the bandwagon of critics who are frustrated by they are not pressing listen stop trying to change things around you something on you is what will change everything around you stop trying to change things around you something on you something on you something on you favor will not come just because you know all the people favor will come because there is something on you that will call them are we together five minutes you are going to play worship for us I don't know whether you want to lie down whether you want to cry but for the next five minutes I'm leaving you and God alone I want you to flock it in a time of intense prayer and intercession if I see you joking and looking at me I'll come and hold your hands you are going to cry to God and say my life my destiny Lord the unction for my destiny you are alone I'm going to be crying to God too so it's a moment of intercession five minutes give us worship play and everybody just cry to God
to see what he will make out of your mind. The anointing does not just come. There is a generation that is at the mercy of men and women, ladies, gentlemen. Our children are at the mercy of our alignment. Please, you must understand this. Every lady, every woman of God here, listen to me your children you are the ones who will carry them for nine months men don't carry children do you know what it means for a woman to carry a baby for nine months you can transfer everything required if you are anointed if you are anointed if you are anointed please all through this week let your prayer be use me use me it's a prayer we used to pray before but many people in the body of christ don't pray it again use me they just say i know that i'm used i was born for a reason arrogant rubbish talk use me a desperate cry from a vessel that wants to be used lord and god i know you can do without Can you pray that prayer in one minute before we round up? Use me. Use me. Please pray from your heart. Use me. For your glory, for your power, remain where you are if you're on the ground you can remain there i want to make a very serious altar call there are people here in this congregation there are people outside you know you have never truly given your hearts to jesus probably you were invited for the first time probably you are following online right now with your device and you know that you need Jesus as a matter of life and death there is a second category 
those who have never seen a reason to be serious with God anything that happens whatever those two categories of people I want to pray for you I feel a deep body in my heart especially for those who are coming out here now wherever you are whether you are outside don't match anybody on the ground there are still people praying but I want you to leave your seat and come out right now the Lord is touching people strangely outside I see a lot of impartations outside but make your way and come out here right now make your way and come out here as you come and stand just start praying no cajoling nobody is, 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 is wasting time cajoling you you know by yourself that you are saying no Lord I take you seriously I take you seriously I take you seriously I take you seriously is God still speaking to people where are those outside that God is speaking to what is restraining you from rushing to his call again are you still embarrassed is this still a decision you are trying to make is this still a decision is this still a battle you are trying to win are you still trying to think about it it's not worth thinking about it's worth acting on still come i know there are still more people as you come out here just stand and pray talk to god please don't sit back there when god is saying come out sit back there there are destinies tied to the decision you are making you must be born again God is still bringing men out. Make your way and come. Make your way and come. Let tonight be a night of encounter. If you don't plan to be serious with this prayer, go back to your seat, please. We are not playing games. You have to be serious here. This is not some emotional thing to just come and entertain yourself. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. I want to salute all of you who have come out. Some of you, this is your first time making a quality decision. You've been lying, you've been pretending, you are not serious. You just made those decisions so they don't disturb you. Today will be your first official intentional decision. For some of you, you are rededicating yourself sincerely. You are saying, Lord, I need you. I need you. I'm not, there's, there's no pretending it. I really need you. It doesn't matter what category you belong. Before I lead you to pray, in one minute, talk to Jesus and say, I mean business with you. Go ahead. Everyone standing here. Lord, as I'm standing here, please discern it from my heart that I mean business with you. Oh, it's not like before. I know I came out for an altar call. I was just laughing while the altar call was going on. I didn't even know what I was doing, but now, no, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not ashamed. Let them see me. Yes, it is me. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! the phase of development lord grant me the discipline